കനിമൊഴി സിസ്റ്റർ ഓൺലി ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ദർ ആർ ഏജ് സ്പീക്കേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ടോട്ടൽ ടൈം ഇസ് ട്വന്റി സെവൻ സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൺലി ത്രീ ത്രീ ആൻഡ് ഹാഫ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് ബട്ട് ടേക്ക് ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് ത്രീ ആൻഡ് ഹാഫ് ബട്ട് ഐ ഗിവിംഗ് യു ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് ഫൈവ് മിനിറ്റ്സ് Sir, I'd like to read out some excerpts from a child who has been um, sent to uh, a juvenile justice home about her life. Four years back, when I was just over 16 years old, I was find, found guilty of kidnapping a 12-year-old girl and selling her into sex work. I was in standard nine, and my father did not allow me to appear for the 10th standard exam. My father's younger brother, Uh, used to sexually abuse me make me do all kinds of work and hit me if i did not know what he wanted me to do unable to bear this my father took up another house nearby in the same village my sister w- uh, worked in a nearby factory and she was the only earning member in my house but my uncle used to take away the money from her and harassed us and he asked me also to work and he used to harass me and hit me and take away the money i made <coughs> to drink my mother died when i was 7 years old by drinking poison my uncle used to harass my mother a lot and my mother even lodged a complaint against him in the police station but nobody took action so she thought taking away her life is the only way out when i dropped out of school i and my sister started going for a job in the garments factory where i worked for 3 months and my sister used to beat me up when i did not want to go to work because at times i was moody i did not want to work but every word and the local manager used to misbehave with me and these were the reasons when i did not feel like working one day my grandmother fell sick and they gave me 500 rupees to buy fruits for her but i was homesick and i had been in hospital for 3 or 4 days and i just went took the money went to the market and bought some snacks some earrings and then i got scared i did not go back to the hospital because when i go then when i finally went back my father hit me and i ran away to another village there i made friends with an auto driver he was nice to me but his friend one day said he will take me to a safe place and he sold me to shobha aunty's house there a, ma- a middle aged man paid 5000 rupees for me and shobha asked, aunty asked me to go sleep with him when i refused she beat me badly and forcibly made me eat sleeping tablets i did not know what was happening there was a pregnant lady with me the next morning she said that many men had raped me that night after that i was taken to a farm house along with other girls and every time i was go forced to go and sleep with different men and i was beaten made to eat sleeping tablets and the nightmares followed then i ran away and came back home but my family hit me and they did not want to accept me back because i had brought a bad name to them then one day i met a young girl who was 12 years old called sunita in the bus and then still desperate because i had no place to go i went back to shobha aunty's house she asked me to bring sunita to her and i took sunita and she gave me some money and i thought i could use that and then i left later i came to know that sunita had been taken to different places including some tourist places temple towns etc and treated very badly burnt with cigarettes etc then i realized what i had done was a very big mistake but it was too late i was taken by the police who also slapped me and beat me badly my family was called and they too hit me and i was accused of trafficking and selling this young girl to sex work sir according to this new bill this is a heinous crime but <coughs> can you say that this child who has gone through so much something which none of us can really relate to we can't imagine the trauma the child has gone through but and she has sold somebody without even understanding what she was doing without understanding without knowing what her uh, act is going to 
do. And after all the trauma, the child cannot think straight, cannot understand what is right or wrong after what has happened to her. But under the new law, we will be sending her to prison because she has committed a heinous crime of no, no, uh, trafficking. That's not, right. That's not correct. No, let me. Yes. The minister, yes, in our uh, beginning speech, it was a very, very convincing, very good speech. But, sir, we don't even have enough courts in this country. We don't have enough doctors in this country. We don't have enough uh, judges in this country. There are, there are thousands and thousands of cases waiting to be disposed. And we, we, do we have enough counselors? Do we have uh, enough medical help? Do we have enough psychiatrists? Do we have enough psychologists? If we set Minister, up a board. Minister promised that there will be... Enough. Yes, sir. We've been seeing a lot of promises. Yes, I'm, I'll be very happy if, uh, if she's able to actually do what she promises. But we've been seeing so a lot of promises. The governments have been uh, promising to increase the number of courts and disposing all the cases. Have been, be, been able to do it. So, under these circumstances, this board, which is going to be set up, Will they really be able to, will they be experts who will really be able to understand what this child went through and decide whether she has to be sent to jail, or she has to be tried as an adult or as a juvenile? I think this is unfair. We are today very emotional. We are today very worried about the future generations. We are very worried about what is the, the safety of women. We are in a way, I mean, you can definitely understand it from the many of the members who spoke here about how emotionally charged we are about this issue. At this juncture, what is the hurry? I really don't understand why do we have to pass this bill today? Why cannot, we can. Definitely. No, please don't comment like that, please. Please. There yes. are so many other things which we have to consider. Some. It is, there's so much of wrong information going around. Uh, the share of the child, the child crimes, juvenile crimes, has remained static from 2003 to 2013. It is around 1% 1 to 1.2%. It has not really gone up to the alarming numbers which is being uh, 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 talked about. And Numerous studies in developmental psychology have found that contrary to such perceptions of early maturation, adolescence is a period of tremendous psychological, hormonal, emotional, as well as structural changes in the human brain, and therefore it is time for great vulnerability. Yeah, and according to the American Psychological Association, I'm American Psychiatric Association and American National Association for Social Workers, older adolescents lack the adult capabilities to exercise self-restraint, to weigh risk and reward appropriately, and to envision the future that oh, are just you've as taken critical eight minutes. to... My, sir? You've already taken eight minutes. Sir. I forgot to... Trust. Thank you, sir. Oh, sir. <laughs> I take it as a compliment, sir. Please, uh, as please critical conclude, please to make conclude. sure judgment, especially please in conclude. emotionally... Uh, please conclude. No, no, emotionally please. Yes, sir, finishing, sir. Yeah. Emotionally charged. Yeah. Settings. Sir, the Standing Committee and the Justice Verma Committee have also expressed their opinions against uh, bringing the age down to 16 years. Okay, no. So, when there, there's no so control. much of debate happening and there's so much of concern about it, I think okay. it would be really good if the government sends this to a select committee and okay. we can have more discussions, okay. more considerations, and then pass this bill. Okay. There is really no hurry in doing it. Right. I think the future of our children, um, the security is very important, okay. but the future of our children is more important. I think we have okay. to give it enough consideration before okay. passing this bill. Thank, Thank you. you.